Thanks for joining this final part of our classroom deep dive. Uh, and this is the exciting part where I'd like to tell you about a brand new feature in Classroom called Practice Sets, only released a short time ago, and uh, you have access to it in the New South Wales Department of Education. Uh, let me show you how it works. This is Google Classroom, and if I go up to the top corner here, you'll see I have an option here that says Practice Sets. So I'm going to click into that category and maybe just move myself over here out of the way. Okay, so Practice Sets is a way of teachers to create short quizzes, if you like, or practice exercises so that students can refresh their skills, maybe set them as homework, maybe set them as end of, uh, end of topic type um, revision, but they, are, they use some fairly smart AI to, uh, to help students and to help teachers build these exercises. Let me show you an example of what I mean. I'll show you a finished one and then we'll backtrack and show you how to create one from scratch. So these are practice sets and the neat thing about them is they can be inserted into a classroom assignment just like any other object. So once a practice set is made you can attach it to a classroom assignment and then it becomes something that the students do as part of that assignment. I've, uh, it, right, it, they lend themselves particularly well to mathematics and sciencey type things at the moment. You can of course use them for anything but they are mapped to a lot of curriculum right now for the sort of the maths and sciences. Um, but, I mean, use them for whatever you like. Let me give you an example. So I go into this one that I've made here called Algebra and Maths. And this practice set opens up and you can see this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions, okay? Um, various, ranging from very simple to a little bit more complicated. Uh, and, and if I go to edit this and show you how this was made, so you can see it has, first of all, a question's been asked, a correct answer has been indicated so that the system knows what the correct answer is. But down the bottom here, it has a list of skills. And this one's identified that this question is really about triangles. This, this is like calculate the missing side length of a triangle. So a little bit more information than this question actually needs. But this little light bulb indicates that there are some hints that have been added to this. I'll show you this second one down here. This is a simple algebra. And uh, one of the hints that's been added here is solve basic algebraic expressions and equations. And again, the little light bulb indicates to the student that there is a hint attached to this. I've indicated here as a teacher that I will accept the answer x equals 2 or just 2. Both of those are fine uh, and so on. So when you create these questions, you can create short answers, paragraphs, single select or multiple select options. Uh, and the short answer and single and multiple select can be auto marked. Obviously, a paragraph answer can't be auto marked. You can still use them, but you'd have to uh, do those manually yourself to grade. Okay, so that's kind of the, um, uh, the basics of how those questions look when they're set up. Let's see what they look like as a student. So I'll click this Try as Student button up here, and it will open a new tab and show me this is what it looks like when the student does it. And this is a really nice feature because I know something that people have asked for in Classroom for a long time is, you know, can we see classroom the way the students see it? And it's kind of not that simple to do, but with practice sets you can. You can see this now exactly as the student would see it. So you can see this has a number of question types here. This is, uh, there's, well, there's seven questions in here, and it's got the questions showing. Now, the neat thing about this is if I know the answer, I can just type it in. I, can, I know the answer here is three, so I type in three and I check my work and it runs a little check there and gives me, it goes green, gives me a tick, and I know that was correct. Fantastic. Let's move on to something a little bit more complicated, and that is this algebra question here. So I don't know what the answer is here, so I might have to calculate it. Now, rather than me reach for a piece of paper and scribble it out on a piece of paper, then come back here, what's much more useful is for the teacher to be able to see the process that the student used. So. Ideally, you'll use this on a platform that has a stylus where you can write. Um, so, you know, a Chromebook with a stylus and a touch screen uh, is a really good thing for this. Uh, I am on a screen here where I can't do that, but let me show you how it would work. So I'm going to go show my work and I get this little scratch pad area here where I can, I can type in some calculations. But even better, I, sh I can write calculations by switching into inking mode. 
So it brings up this little scratch pad, which can be a little bit bigger. If I need it to be longer, I can make it longer. And I can write my calculations. So I'm writing here with a mouse, which is not ideal. But I can say 2x plus 6 equals 10. This is way easier with a stylus. Now I can then say, well, I need to go minus 6 from both sides. Minus 6, minus 6 which would make that 2x plus 2x. Uh, this would, this would uh, zero each other out. And so 2x then would be equal to 10 minus 6, which would be 4. So therefore, if I divide this by 2 uh, and divide that by 2, um, I would get x equal to 2. Okay, I'm showing my working and that's really, uh, I think a great feature inside classroom here is that I'm showing my working. Now, let's say I didn't know how to do that as a student. You notice that up here, the little light bulb on the corner here has, is yellow, which telling me, is telling me there's a hint attached here that classroom, uh, sorry, that uh, practice sets has automatically added for me based on the content of the question. So if I click on the, the little plus sign here, it gives me a clue. 2x plus 6 equals 10. I, can't, I have to subtract 6 from both sides, simplify to both sides. So it's telling me and stepping me through what I need to know to solve this problem in case I didn't know. Okay, and that's exactly what we've done there. That's good. So I can say, well, my answer was 2, so I write a 2. And let's just um, see, it's, it's detected that that horrible thing that I wrote there is not is a two. Uh, it's recognized my writing. Uh, and I can check my answer now and say check. And it goes and checks and says, yep, that correct. You get a little tick and it goes green. That was a two. And I can work my way through the rest of these examples. Let's go down to this one here. So this is a question on combining like terms. So I've got some you know, 12a and minor 12a and 16a and I need to do something with them and I've got pluses and minuses. I've got a whole bunch of things going on here. Let's say I don't know how to do this. I can click on the hint button and it will open up a hint on the side there and give me some ideas about how I collect like terms. So it's not exactly this question, but it should give me enough information to go by that I can start to understand how I might solve this problem. And once I, once I do, I think the answer is that one. I can hit the check button and it will check for me and tell me I'm correct. I could have gone in here and said show my work and I could have worked it out and so on and um, and, and that's all good. Again, it's, here's a, it's a um, factorization question here. Click on that and it gives me some information there about how to factorize. So as I work through this, it's telling me what I get right and wrong. Let's just get one wrong. So I don't know what the answer is here, but let's guess it's not that. <laughs> And we'll say check, and that will tell me that that one was wrong. Okay, I got that wrong. Now I could, and when, by the way, when I got it right, you see that it's opened a video on the side here to explain to me how to do algebraic fractions and how to multiply them out. So that's a helpful resource. But let's say I, I'm, I'm going to guess this one now. We'll say, let's check that one, and that one is also wrong. I could keep guessing until I get it right. In this video, we're going to focus on. But Classroom will actually tell me when I look at the results from this that this was not solved on the first go. And that's a useful data point for teachers to know whether the student had to have multiple attempts or whether they got it in the first attempt. So that's an example of classroom uh, practice sets in action. That's what they look like from the student's uh, point of view. Let's just get rid of that and go back to the main page and look at how we actually create one from scratch. So I'll say done editing. And so let's uh, let's go back to the main practice sets page here. So uh, that was the one I used, algebra and maths. Let's just create a brand new practice set by clicking on that create button, and it will open up this page like so, and it lets me do my practice sets. And I'm just going to call this uh, algebra one, and type in my question. So my question might be let's do a similar question to what we just did. Um, you know, a simple algebra solving question. Now, writing maths formulas has never been simple on a computer. Uh, and thankfully, we've tried to do something in here to make it a little bit easier for teachers. There's a button on here to insert a maths formula. So you can see that opens up there. And this little blue box I can type in is where my maths formulas will go. Now, I, and by that, I mean, if I type an X here, I get like a mathematical X rather than just if I come outside the blue box. 
I get a, like a regular X, okay? So there is a difference between what you're typing into that little blue box. Um, and again, really well suited for math, so there's a lot of math tools in here. If I need to write specific formulas, there's a little maths keyboard that pops up, and you can see it brings up this maths keyboard, and I can write some more complicated mathematical things. So let's say I want to work out the, I don't know, well, let's do this. So we'll say uh, 2x plus um, 6 equals 12. Okay. Now, I know the answer to that question is uh, 3. x equals 3. So I could say the answers I want to accept here is x. Oops, sorry. I'm going to put it in the mathematical thingy. Uh, answers. So I want uh, x equals 3. I'll accept, or maybe I'll just accept the answer 3. That's fine as well. Now, what about the hint that I want to give the students? So I am going to go in here. What I'm trying to do is solve algebra, right? And if I just wait a second, it will pop up a little list of skills that it's aware of. So this is solving basic algebraic expressions. So that's the one I want. So I'll put that in there and the little light bulb lights up and that has now added a hint to this question for me. That's how you set up one of these questions in here. I'll just go to a new question because I just wanted to show you the, uh, the maths keyboard again. So let's say the question was something like, you know, find the square root of 25. Find, um, uh, square root of 25, I need the little maths keyboard to do that. So it's the square root symbol and it's that one there and I want 25. And then the answer of course I want, I'm looking for is five and the search for the skills, uh, square root. So let's see what it turns up and hopefully there you go. So how to um, uh, calculate a square root. So maybe that's a useful thing for me to tell my students and it adds the hint. I can add more than one skill too if I want. I can add multiple hints. So that's how you set the questions up. And then of course, once you once you have them set up, if you want to try this as a student, you can click on the Try as Student button and it will open this uh, uh, sample page up so you can see what you've created. Again, this is what the student will see. So, you know, if I want to show my work, I open the Show My Work button, I go to Scribble Mode, and I can say, you know, 2x plus 6, blah, blah, blah. I work out all my answers there. Hopefully figure out the answer is 3. I can, uh, it's, it's detected my, my 3 that I've written, and I say check, and it marks me as correct, and so on. The hint for that is if I click on that button, okay, it's giving me the example here. It's telling me how to step through that. Let's look at the square root question. Let's say I have no idea how to do this question. I can click on the hint button and move me out of the way and it gives me an idea here about how I might solve this problem. Okay, so that's how you create a practice set. That's how they look. And if I just close that tab up, you'll see if I go back to my list, uh, algebra one, there is the one I just created. Now, that practice set is now created. I can reuse that over and over as many times as I like. I can also now from the three dots, I can create a share link. So if I'm a math teacher in a class and I want to give this to another math teacher in a class, I can click the share link and it will turn on the sharing and the teachers will be able to get a link to that practice. Sorry, turn that on. Um, the teachers will get the link to the practice set like so. I can copy the link and then just email it or send it to another teacher. The nice thing about being able to use this inside the New South Wales department is because all the schools in the department are all part of the same Google domain. So you can share between schools if you'd like to. So uh, that practice set is made. How do you actually use it? Let's just go back to one of our classes, say our demonstration class. And I go to my classwork page and I want to create an assignment. And the assignment might be um, algebra practice. Algebra practice. And I can write my instructions as usual and all the things we talked about before. But what I need to do now is just click on practice sets. It opens up my list of practice sets that I've got, which of course are all reusable. And this algebra one is the one I want to reuse. So I load that up. I say, yep, let me move me out of the way. Sorry, move me out of the way. Uh, yep, this is the one I want to do. I can, I can review it as a student if I want to at this stage or edit it if I need to make a change. But otherwise, I'll just attach it. 
And that practice set now gets attached to the task like so. And then when I assign it, it pushes it out to all my students and they all have access to this practice set. So that's how you, that's what a practice set is. That's how you create one. That's how you attach one to a task to send it out to students. The last piece of the puzzle is what does it look like once students have actually done it? Let me show you. I'm going to come in here to this algebra practice that I've already done. You can see six students have handed this one in. This is one I've done earlier uh, and I've used that algebra and maths set that I showed you earlier. So let's have a look and see what's happened. It opens it up here and I can see these are the students who have handed it in and two students have yet not handed it in. Uh, but let's have a look at the results from this practice set. So I'm just going to click on the class insights here and it goes into this practice set review screen and this is where I think the real value of practice sets come in is first of all the AI has given me a little insight up here into the overall results now I'm only looking at six students here so I could probably work this out myself but if you have a full class with more students the insights become more useful because they start to look for patterns that you might not necessarily see immediately so this is telling me that there are five students that got problem seven incorrect I need to review that and understand why so many students have got that incorrect it's also telling me that Walter and Bud uh, uh, didn't do so well they're struggling with many problems so maybe I need to give some attention to those two students down here I can see all the students and the results the dark green or the, the sort of solid green is where a student has got the answer correct on the first attempt and the faded green is where it took more, uh, two or more attempts. So they had multiple attempts to try and get the answer. So I can see, for example, that Helen did really well because she got everything correct on the first go, whereas Crystal did equally as well, but she had to have a couple of attempts at different questions. So that's a useful piece of information for me to know as a teacher. Over on this side, I see the list of the different questions and how many students got things right, how many students got things wrong, uh, and if I click on these questions, so let's go to say problem two, it will unpack all of the problem two examples from all of the students and I can see, so here is Crystal's attempt, here is Artie's attempt, here is Helen's attempt and so on. And I can see, so you know, Artie for example got this one wrong and I can actually go back and look at that student's work to try and understand, to get some visibility into what they were thinking uh, to understand why they got it wrong that's a more important piece of information for me to know as a teacher. So I can look at a specific question or I can click on a student's name and it will open up that particular student over here and show me each of their attempts. So this is Artie's attempt at all of the questions and I can see this one was wrong, this one was right and so on and I can get a much better feel for how I might help my students. The important things, the the, the practice sets is able to give those hints and tips to a student as they need them, as they're doing the tasks. It's able to automatically grade the work and then it gives me, the teacher, the insights at the end into knowing who's done what, how well they did it, and then giving me the visibility into their student work. So I hope you find practice sets a really super useful tool. It is free for unlimited use for users of Google+, which is the New South Wales Department. Um, so you can use this as much as you like. Uh, and I can't wait to hear the success stories of how you're using practice sets inside your Google Classroom.